So next week marks Columbus Day, or as people in America's major cities like to call it, Indigenous Peoples Day. Columbus has been removed from the lexicon because Columbus was a very, very bad man in every possible way. And really, really what the blowback on Columbus Day is about is not Christopher Columbus as an individual human. What it really is about is a left-wing willingness to rewrite American history to the point where Western civilization arriving in the new world is now considered a bad thing. Joining us on the line to discuss is Dr. Robert Royal. He's founder and president of the Faith and Reason Institute in Washington, D.C. He's editor-in-chief of The Catholic Thing. He's author of the brand new book, Columbus and the Crisis of the West, released in September 2020. Dr. Royal, thanks so much for joining the show. Appreciate it. Good to be with you, Ben. So let's talk about Columbus Day. So Columbus Day is coming up next week. There's been a broad movement in the United States, especially in in left-wing areas, to supplant Columbus Day with Indigenous Peoples Day. So number one, what's the full story on Columbus? Because when we were kids, we were sort of told the, the short version, which was, discovered America, 1492, crosses the ocean blue. And then when you are in college, they feed you the Howard Zinn version, which is that he's a brutal human rights violator who is attempting to subjugate the natives in the most cruel possible way. So what, what is the actual story of Christopher Columbus? Well, look, in my in, in my book, I try to tell the truth about him, which I think is the most important thing to do right now. Is he you know, a perfect human being? Did he handle relations with the indigenous peoples in the Caribbean? No. I mean, he, he was in an unprecedented circumstance. But you're exactly right that this has nothing to do with him as a human being. I hear from people all the time. Uh, my son, my daughter came back from school and they were studying Columbus. And what did they, well, what did they teach you? Well, he was a genocidal maniac. Really? I mean, no historian believes that Columbus attempted genocide against any people. The other thing that they hear about him is that he was worse than Hitler. Well, Hitler killed 40 million people and then also did attempt a genocide against the Jews, killed six million European Jews. So how was he he and the Spaniards worse than Hitler? These, these things are ridiculous. But they're indicative of the kind of, I think we have to say, indoctrination along that Howard Zinn line that you talked about that has been going on for decades. And so when those mostly young white people were stomping on those statues of Columbus that came down earlier this year, they were doing so, I, I don't even blame them. They, it isn't their fault. They were taught a, a lie that de- depends primarily on left-wing hatred of the West, hatred of our religious history as well as our secular history. And therefore, it's not surprising that they just think that this symbolic person who began uh, the, the beginning of the development of the Americas ought to be rejected wholesale. So what exactly is the is the sort of dark side of the Columbus legacy and what is the upside of the Columbus legacy from from where you sit? So, you know, the, the Zinn, you know, he says he's a genocidal maniac and all of this. Uh, and then he points to particularly documentation that, that happened decades later uh, by a, a particular priest who was writing about Columbus, suggesting cruelty against the natives. What is the actual story of what Columbus did uh, so that, well, you know, the folks priest, are yeah, talking the about Columbus? That- yeah, the priest that he's invoking, Bartolomé de las Casas, who universally is recognized as the defender of the Indians, that's the phrase that's often used about him, knew Columbus well and was a friend of Columbus's, and in fact says the exact opposite of what Zinn said. He says that he had a very sweet and benign temperament, that he was a, a kind of a noble character. He said, I would not question his intentions because I knew his motives and I knew his motives were good. Well, he was not good at he was not good as a governor on land. He was a great explorer, a great navigator. But when he was a governor on land, I, I think that part of the problem is his personality that he was too indulgent, that he was actually too easygoing in in situations of conflict. So you start to find that, you know, he's indulging toward both the indigenous peoples and the the Spaniards. And then when there are clashes, he gets harsh toward both indigenous people and Spaniards, by the way. This is not as if he's got some kind of racial prejudice against indigenous peoples or he's especially hard hard to them. He's just not good as a, a kind of a ruler, as a politician. The positive side, I would say, is this, is, is that he just had this great daring and vision and, 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 and perseverance to do something that no one had ever done before. Some of my friends uh, tell me that they were very impressed by the pictures of from space that showed us all living in one world, for example. And I think we could instead say that the beginning of the one world that we so value, that all human beings are in this one world together, this begins in 1492 with this, this incredible voyage across the Atlantic. So look, to sum this up, what I often say is if you're going to blame Columbus for every bad thing that has happened since 1492 in the Americas, 
doesn't he at least deserve a little bit of credit for all the wonderful things that we know have happened in the Americas during that same period? So let's talk for a second about the attempt not just to get rid of the of, of Columbus Day, but also to replace it with Indigenous Peoples Day. Now, that to me is a particularly obvious and, and ridiculous attempt at, at rewriting American history, not just to get rid of Columbus and not just to suggest that he involved himself in things that we wouldn't involve ourselves in today, but, but also to, to suggest that basically the West would have been better if it had never found the New World, that everything was going fantastically well in the New World. Uh, Zinn himself says this in his ridiculous book. He, he basically suggests that all Native life uh, in the New World was violence-free, that everybody was living in harmony with nature. It's sort of a Pocahontas uh, view of the world in terms of like the Disney movie. Uh, well, what's the reality of that? Well, it is simply preposterous. Uh, anthropologists, historians, people who actually know Native American cultures know that Columbus did not bring slavery to the New World because slavery already existed in Aztec culture, even in North American Indian cultures. Chief Seattle, who gave his name to the city that is now so troubled out in the state of Washington, himself was a Native American leader who owned eight slaves. It was, it was a, a common practice in Pacific Northwest Indian societies. That whole thing is just concocted out of whole cloth. It, 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 it is not the case that Europeans brought anything new to the New World because indigenous peoples in the New World were human beings, just as we are. They were flawed. They had empires. They practiced imperialism. They practiced colonialism. They practiced racism, sexism, all those things that we, we would try to eliminate today. And I think you put your finger on a, an extremely important point when you talk to the way that they're replacing Columbus Day with Indigenous Peoples Day. Look, we could proclaim Indigenous Peoples Day on another date. Uh, we don't have to cancel Columbus. We don't have to repudiate our own religious and, and cultural heritage in order to honor other people. If we, what we want to do is be more inclusive, we don't have to exclude one of the, the crucial and central elements in our own history. And I, I think that this is very telling. You're exactly right about that. Well, Dr. Robert Royal, his book is Columbus and the Crisis of the West. Really appreciate your time and your insight on this topic. Thanks so much. My, my pleasure, Ben.